here we have where wattle stains the where pot. wattle pottle where wattle pollen stains the doubting doubting heart. heart. Now John has to read that out because he does it in a beautiful voice. Okay. Yeah. And let's tell us the title and and where the title came from. So read the title and then say why you chose the title. Where wattle pollen stains the doubting heart. What a wonderful line that is from uh, uh, James Macaulay. Just uh, it, it's the reaffirmation of life and I was in that um, uh, Riverina country and at the side here is the Murrumbidgee River sort of meandering it goes out out somewhere there and but it comes back here again and it has a little kind of goodbye sign there and and the pollen is in the air and the birds, the honey eaters are there and they're just attracted. But it seems to come out of a, like a radial, uh, a centre that moves out like arms. And, and whilst there's this concentration of life here, <coughs> it goes towards infinity just like the Australian landscape. We've got to consider the, the uh, 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 geographies as a, an overall look of Australia, insofar as that, that you've got this sort of great dividing range and you go over that and then right the way to the Indian Ocean, the landscape is like... Um, a crumpled carpet and uh, this incredible thing of what Australia is the old raft that didn't go anywhere and so consequently we have kangaroos and we have marsupials and, and all kinds of strange creatures because it was cut off from the rest of, uh, of uh, Asia mm. and it's this it's, it's this uniqueness and, and I think we in Australia are very, very touched and involved in this landscape. Um, many years ago, the, uh, principally because of the failure of the Burke and Wills expedition, that what happened after the Burke and Wills expedition, which after all was uh, uh, surveying uh, to find land which could be used for agriculture and so on. The failure of that had such a devastating thing, uh, effect on the population that, that they didn't really want to go into that desert part at all. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they didn't. And the, uh, the Heidelberg School is the perfect, the perfect example of that it's all done on the coastal fringe. There is no desert painting in Australian art, significant desert painting in Australian art until Hans Heysen, wait for it, went to the Flinders Ranges in 1922. Gosh. And certainly no one went to Lake Eyre, no artist went there and worked. <clears throat> and then you get Nolan and Drysdale saying, this is kind of a, a heart, a kind of a, a moving heart. It's not a dead heart. Mm -hmm. And when Nolan first showed those McDonald Range pictures in London, <coughs> that the critics thought he'd invented it and that it was a landscape of the moon. Mm -hmm. So like this, this kind of feeling that, that we have for this, very enigmatic and not always hospitable with its droughts and floods and, and um, uh, disasters, bushfires, of course. And but we're attached to it. You know, it's like 
that I used to say, or I still say to young artists, get rooted. Uh, because, because if you don't have that, it's not the answer, of course, but if you don't have that, where are your feet? I mean, what is Dickens without London? What is Tolstoy and Dostoevsky without Russia? Mm. <clears throat> Uh, and you like that is that is the kind of foundation of your sensibility. And it's interesting that so often the Australian landscape plays that part. It's a, it, it, it seems to be a vital part of our, our of our commitment to the visual. So to you, the quintessential <coughs> Australian landscape is is really that that really tush, uh, tough, harsh. A dry climate um, to you the real beauty and and connection is with that that sort of Australian landscape uh, yes it's uh, well the untidy sprawling yes um, um, one yeah I think Bill Robinson's done something with rainforest yes that's in Queensland yes uh, very good but, but um, you connect much more with this drier harsher well it's, you, you it's, see the romance in it well, yes. yeah, I, I see it's and the poetry full, in it. Yeah, yes, it's full of poetry. <laughs> as as um, I don't know whether you know about uh, 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 George George the Fifth, and uh, he was asked that uh, why don't you have more more artists to and writers and poets uh, come to the palace. And he said, <coughs> because I ate poets and painters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you see the beauty in it. You see the romance in it. Oh, it's wonderful. Yes, and you see the metaphors. Oh, yeah. But, yes. but that's what, you see, you've got <clears throat> to understand it's animism, it's life. Yes. It's individual character. I, yes. I think that, like the best of Aboriginal art yes. definitely has that. But there's one thing that is a serious absence in Aboriginal art is there is no light in it. Yes. yes. And it wasn't until the Heidelberg School yes. uh, uh, came, Street mm. and Roberts, mm. Mm. Conda, that Australian light, here we are, yes. 1886. Yes, yes. And the light had never really been captured. Yes. That's an extraordinary thing. I mean, 